Have you ever wanted to get your hands on some new equipment that you thought was going to change the face of streaming for the near future? Well, that's what we have right here with Beacon's new products, the Beacon Mic, the Beacon Mix, and the Beacon Mix Create. Three products I think you're going to be very interested in, so let's go ahead and not waste any more time. Let's get into the video. So let's talk about the Beacon Mic first. I think this is the one that most people are really interested in, so we'll go ahead and knock it out. So the Beacon Mic is a USB cardioid dynamic microphone, okay? Obviously, it looks a lot like an SM7B. A lot of people see that similarity. Uh, it has this RGB around it that does serve function. Uh, it will show you, eventually will show you uh, muting. It shows you uh, audio levels, depending on how you have it set up. Uh, there's all kinds of customization that you can do with it. Uh, it has a full suite of mic effects that you can have with this, including compression, EQ, uh, uh, expansion, and adaptive noise suppression. It has a built-in DSP unit that's going to allow you to move this microphone from one PC to another. It's going to have the settings saved all inside of it. Matter of fact, all the processing happens inside the microphone so that you can move this from one PC to other and your settings will be saved within the microphone. So you don't even need the software on another microphone. You just plug the uh, microphone up to another computer and you will have all your settings there, which is fan fantastic it comes with a two millimeter headphone cable it has a high quality headphone amplifier built into it that supports high impedance headphones such as uh the bear dynamic dt 990s i believe that go up to 320 ohms uh, it has an amplifier that supports that so you're going to get nice high quality sound uh, it goes from 0 to 20 db for adjustable gain it covers 50 to 20 kilohertz for your frequency response sensitivity is minus 27 dbfs at minimum gain and dynamic range is 94 db which is very important because that's a very good dynamic range for a microphone of course the usb interface is usb type c and the housing is made of zinc alloy and it weighs 751 grams which is just a hair under the sm7b if you're wondering about the weight okay the microphone modules that comes with it it comes with a limiter a compressor an eq real-time noise suppression an expander that operates like a noise gate and an enhancement suite which is a bass enhancer and an exciter to add a little bit of airiness to your microphone the next thing we'll talk about is the beacon mix so the beacon mix is a simple audio controller uh, for your pc it has four knobs, four channels of audio that you can drag and drop your different audio sources that Windows has into one for each of these channels, and you can control the audio levels and you can mute the channels as you need. So it's very simple, easy to understand, hardware interface, and people are kind of wondering, I've seen people say, well, why do I want something like that? Well, what is it going to give you? The opportunity and the ability to do is to be able to control your audio while you're in game. You don't have to come out of your game and change your audio levels within the windows. You will have uh, instant access to your audio that you have set to these knobs. So, you know, your four most used audio levels is something I would recommend you do that you can turn up and down and mute as necessary without getting out of your game. And that's very important. Uh, I didn't originally think it was such a big deal, but after using it for the past couple of days, I see where the functionality is with it. Very convenient, and I like that convenience. Okay, and this is the Beacon Mix Create. This is probably the one people are most interested in, as this one really interfaces with the mixing software and gives you all of the external control of the Beacon Mix uh, that think a lot of people would really like so it's pretty self-explanatory you have four knobs right here obviously control the different levels of everything uh, instead of pressing the buttons to mute you actually press this button to mute and you can see it gives you an indication of muting all of the different buses you have pagers right here that you can page over to another page of controls so you can get all of the different channels that you add to your mix right here. So you can control them via these four knobs. And again, you can mute all of them. And then this button right here is your bus mix uh, controller. So you can listen to either your uh, 
personal mix or the audience mix. And another thing you do is, you know, you can have multiple microphones, USB mics, that you can then control via the uh, Mix Create. So pretty simple, nice, clean screen, uh, simple to understand. You have all of your listings, all your different devices for e that's uh, on each of the channels. And that's really it. Uh, customizable colors. You can customize all these colors inside of the Beacon app itself. And that's really it. Uh, now, I have a white one here. This also comes in black, and it is available. I think this is $199.99, and the Beacon Mix is $159.99. Now, let's talk about the Beacon app and how it configures for each of the devices. And first, we'll go over the Beacon Mix. So, I have the Beacon Mix on the game PC, and this is how I currently have it set up. So, in this left area here, you have different profiles. This is where you can save load profiles based on different audio configurations. On this little strip right here is your device menu where you can get to your mixer, you get to your settings for your device. This area here is your mixer area where you can control the sliders for each of your different audios. And then here is your output area. This is where you can select two outputs that you can go send to. Um, I have a headphone set and my speakers so I could switch between them as necessary. Uh, it does have a volume control here that you can see. Um, I do. You can see the audio meter here registering a little bit where it's picking up some of the audio coming in. And the neat thing about this mixer area is it does show you what different uh, programs and inputs that you have going to these channels so that you can see what all you're controlling. Uh, down here, all of your sources, these are drag and drop. So I can drag a an app into an area here or I can right click and remove it as necessary. Uh, these are all of the different devices and apps that are running that are outputting audio that you can then put into one of these channels. So some of these though, like playback devices, uh, you cannot drag and drop this. Like I can't drag and drop my XR1 there. Um, I can't drag my focus right and all that because they're already in this playback uh, area here where they're already selected. So that's just keep in mind that, that you can't necessarily drag these over there. I can though drag like a microphone I could do different line audios, whatever that Windows is bringing up in there if I wanted to. You do have a hex color picker here where you can change the colors uh, as you want to, uh, you know, add your own branding colors or whatever you want. That's It's nice that they give you that. Uh, so the knobs themselves, we went over that. Uh, you can see how they show up in the mix if I mute. And that's really it. The... Beacon Mix, uh, simple to understand, a uh, very easy UI to use, and it does give you uh, pretty much all the options. So if you, you know, you like, for instance, for Knob 2, if I wanted to dedicate that to browsers, I mean, you could drag every browser that you have on your PC into that one channel, and it will control them all as they're outputting audio, say, watching YouTube, that sort of thing. Same for Spotify or, or any of your music players. If you use Apple Music, Spotify, uh, any of the Windows uh, audio apps, you could drag them all into one channel and then that knob will control them all as they're being used. Discord, you could do Discord TeamSpeak all in one channel. So it does give you a lot of functionality with multiple apps on your uh, PC. Okay, so this is the Beacon app and it is set up for the Beacon mic and the Beacon Mix Create. Okay, so I'm gonna run through this real quick. I'm not gonna go into a deep tutorial on all this. That's all stuff that is coming in the future, but I just want to show you everything that it does, including noise suppression, expansion, compression, and got a built-in headphone amp. So again, these areas are familiar as you know, I showed you before with the regular mix. Uh, you got your profiles here. This is my pun mic settings I've got sa saved. Okay. Also, this is the Beacon Mix Create profile here, the Beacon Barton one which I think is the default it comes with. Uh, anyway, so here is the device strip. I'm going to select my microphone and first we'll go through the mic chain, which is what we're seeing right here. Okay, so at the top is a parametric EQ with a bunch of different bands that you can add. Uh, right now I have four that you can see I've adjusted to uh, 
bold my voice inside of the EQ here. Uh, you're also seeing some enhancements here. This is a bass enhancement, this little white area that's updating in real time. And this is the exciter, which gives me a little bit more airiness in my audio there. And you can see that by the little jaggedy little waveform lines there that's moving in real time. All those are adjustable right here. I uh, get four of those that you can play with. Um, I have number four turned on right now. Uh, in your bands, of course, you can select a band, you get a little ring around there, and then you can adjust everything right here by the different shapes. Uh, and you have the standard ones. You've got the a regular band. Um, you have a, a low shelf. You've got a, uh, a high pass. You've got a notch. You've got a high shelf, and you've got a... This is a low pass. This is a high pass. Uh, you've also got a DS or built in, which is really nice. You can adjust the frequency and the gain and the Q or the bandwidth right here. A um, couple ways you can do that by clicking on the arrows or just moving your mouse back and forth. Get this back to 500 hertz where my voice is terrible. 505 to be precise. All right, so then once you're, you have your EQ set, um, you, you also will have presets in here and future updates, by the way. Um, this guide is nice because it gives you the different bands and kind of gives you a little label of what they all kind of mean and, and the areas uh, for those that, you know, may not uh, have as much audio knowledge as others. All right. Then down here at the bottom, you have your mic set up and this is a nice little real time update, a nice, uh, a nice graph that you can use to uh, update and control the input gain and adjust to get it within this blue area, which is what they recommend you do is this little talk area. You adjust your gain. I have mine set to 10 dB. All right. Also you can control the output gain. Um, this is going to be the output gain after your mic chain that goes out. Uh, you have the mic output there to the right that you can see where it's landing. Again, they give you the guide there that you can turn on and off uh, that show tells you where you want your, uh, output level to be at and of course they want to try to they tell you, you want to try to get it in this little band where it says talk All right next thing is a noise suppressor you have an adaptive noise suppressor uh, if you're familiar with reefer um it operates a lot of the same way except this one is a lot has a lot more definition to it, a lot more samples that it uses to uh, reject noise and it uh, you can control the sensitivity of it. You can control the amount. I think this is a wet dry mix here. You can also take a snapshot of your noise floor when you're not talking and use that instead. But I think most people are probably going to want to use adaptive. So if you have like a fan or an AC that kicks in, um, this adaptive noise suppressor will adjust your noise floor automatically and attempt to cut that out as best as it can based on what you have set down here. Next thing, you have an expander. Uh, this operates like a noise gate, except it's not so much of an odd, just a hard shut and a hard open that you can adjust. They have a couple modes here, simple and advanced, that you can use to change things. Uh, for your advanced users, this looks a lot like a compressor, and it operates like a compressor, just backwards. All right. The next thing is you have your standard compressor here. You, again, they've given you a simple mode, which I think a lot of people are probably using. It'll work just great. Uh, you know, and all you would need to do is just adjust your threshold to where you get the attenuation to be just around, you know, anywhere between uh, one to six dB of, a, of, of compression when it needs to be compressed. Uh, and it comes with your standard makeup gain too, that you can then adjust your output here of the compressor to get it to match your input. Okay. And then of course you can, you can control the amount of compression right here. Um, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Lastly is your headphone amplifier control. Uh, you have two volumes here that you could control, two levels. One is your headphones will be like your PC, audio, that sort of thing. And this is your direct mic monitor output from your microphone into your headphones before mic chain effects. So this is what you're hearing directly out of the microphone. Zero latency. So if you, you, know, you want to monitor yourself, this is what you would use. And uh, personally, I don't. That's why I keep it low. Then you have uh, your equalizer. They've given you a standard three band EQ so you can boost uh, bass, treble, or mid to suit your listening pleasure. And then the, for those of you that have a subwoofer speaker system, okay, you could use this to boost uh, sub frequencies um, as needed. 
All right, then on the right, you have amp power, which is your in-ear monitors, line level, normal power, which is what most people with head gaming headsets and normal headphones will use. And then for you audio files that have high impedance headphones, they've given you a high impedance mode, which works really good. So that is the mic chain effects. Now you have the beacon RGB ring effects here where you've got a ton of different options here to select. Obviously you see, I like the blue and orange cause I'm a battlefield player. The current color scheme for battlefields, green, uh, blue and orange. So anyway, you've got all kinds of different functions in RGB where you can have actually have the RGB operate, you know, as a function, as you can see it updating as I'm talking and I get louder and it changes color. So there is functionality within RGB that's really nice. And you have uh, uh, RG uh, hex uh, color picker where you can go and change colors, you know, for an exact color that you use. So yeah, you, uh, you can also control whether or not you want the RGB on if you want it to, you know, show a, sp a specific color when you're muting it, that sort of thing, which is cool. And then lastly, under settings for your microphone here, this is where you would go and update firmware. You would have the Beacon app start up on Windows and all that and minimize all that stuff. Uh, save confirmation window, which I recommend you do because you might have some tweaks that you've done. And then when you close the app, you forgot to save it. It'll tell you to save it. So there you go. And you also, if you want to opt into to, to their beta, you can do that by clicking this. So there you go. All right. So let's go ahead and minimize the mic. That is all the mic settings inside of the Beacon app. Now we'll go to the uh, create or the mix create. And you see that obviously settings is the same as it was for the mic so we'll not cover that again but now we'll get into the mixer now keep in mind with this the mixer can be activated within the mic too if you just have the microphone and you do not have the mix create you can have this exact same mixer inside of your microphone so keep that in mind that's what's so really cool about this microphone all right so back to the create mix you have all of your faders here. Now I have my microphone as a locked fader. What it does when you lock this is that if you were to use the page function on the hardware device itself, when you page over to the right, your microphone or whatever you have locked will stay in place on the left side of the page while all of the unlocked ones will page over as necessary. So for most people, I would say you would want your microphone locked and then if you page over, you still have access to your microphone. So if you need to mute it, you can mute it. So uh, also here, I have a bunch of different virtual devices set up inside of here. Uh, these are all generated in, for, by the app that go, and then what it does is Windows recognizes it in the uh, audio routing uh, function of it. So I've got music, I've got system, game, hardware, browser, hardware 2, and chat. Now, hardware and hardware 2, these will go ahead and list all of your hardware devices that, system, that Windows recognizes. Let's start over here. All right, so here I have locked faders and unlocked faders. So I wanted to show you this real quick because this is important. When you lock a fader, that's going to lock it on the screen of your mix create so that if you were to use the page function, then whatever you have locked will stay locked on the left side and stay on each page. I see a real use for this for your microphone because you're going to want to be able to mute your microphone uh, at a whim and that's going to always keep your microphone on whatever page you have selected so that's why i have this locked all of the other ones right now are unlocked and so these are all virtual devices that are that are uh created by the beacon app so that windows can use them in the windows audio routing so i've got music system game hardware browser a couple hardware ones and then chat and then what i can do is i can bring them up inside of the app volume and, and device preferences and window by clicking this little button here. And then I can assign these virtual devices to whatever software I want them to go to. So I've got browser beacon mix here going to Google Chrome, Discord, I've got chat beacon mix create. You can see them all listed there. And of course, like you said, you can choose them in this pull down menu. So now whenever the software is being used, the audio is outputting and going into these various virtual devices inside of the Beacon app. So that's really nice. And also as they're being used, they will list inside of this. Let me 
go and bring up Spotify real quick. Let me uh, start up a start up a, a a quick. I know this is Christmas music, but so I've started up Spotify, and you see that it is now listed inside of the app right there. So any device that is current that will be outputting audio to the Beacon app will show up in this list. And then for your hardware, all of the hardware devices that is detected by Windows will show up in this list that you can scroll down to select. So for instance, I have this microphone input turned on. This is my audio coming from my game PC through an analog 3.5 millimeter cable. And then I also have the HDMI coming from my capture card that I use for my mirrorless camera selected so that my microphone on my camera can be uh, used here. So this is the standard mixer. It's easy to understand. You have two controls on each fader on each fader here for my microphone. This is my personal mix on the left and my uh, audience mix on the right. You can unlock these and and then you can change these independently as needed. And you can see the volume change with the levels there. So uh, that's really nice. Uh, down here at the bottom here, you can also select your personal mix and where you want that output to. And they give you two options like they did with the other uh, Beacon mix where you can select, uh, you know, say your headphones or a set of speakers. And then you can choose between those as necessary to listen to whichever one you want to listen to. Uh, likewise, audience mix here, you have control of your audience mix where you can uh, change the volume there. You, you can select that to uh, uh, as you're listening uh, or you can select over to the personal. Um, you can also, instead of going to the audience mix versal mic, you can also pick a hardware device if you wanted to do that to listen to, which is cool. And then down at the bottom, we have our routing table. Okay, your routing table shows you your three sub mixes that you have your personal mix, your audience mix, and then your voice chat mic. So you can go in and turn on and off your different things that you want to go to each your mix just by left clicking on them. And then you can use your personal mix, obviously, for listening to your headphones. Your audience mix is what you would send to say something like OBS or VMix. And then your voice chat mic is a third uh, bus that you can use for a couple of different things. Right now I'm using it just to send microphone to say Discord, but you could use this also for a record bus. So if you're streaming and recording at the same time, um, you can use this third bus to have audio recorded that you don't want certain other items on there. For instance, say you don't want your music going to this record, you just want your chat and this hardware device, say for instance, that's where my game audio is coming in at. Um, you could just have those three things on this third bus instead of having everything that's, you know, you would have going to your stream. So this is really nice. This table routing uh, is, is, is very easy to understand. They've, they've really designed a nice thing. And for people that are familiar with GoXLR, this looks very familiar to you. So uh, very nice uh, having three buses there that you can use for different audio uh, mixes. So it's cool. Very nice. Overall, the app is really clean, really easy to understand. And yeah, um, now, you know, there is some janky things with it uh, that I've noticed, uh, but this is a beta early release version, not the full version. And as software is, um, there will be features, bugs that, uh, you know, you come across that, you know, they will eventually fix. So, and they've been really good about fixing this because they've, they, you know, in the week that I've had this early access version of if they, they've patched it twice already. So anyway, and what I will do is at the end of this, I will go ahead and update. Uh, as you're watching this video, I will have the full release version updated so that then I can start to do an official review. Okay, so here we have the microphone. I want to go through all of the mic settings just to show you that everything is turned off. Uh, you can tell by the slider here. Uh, everything is off and I flatten EQ and turn off any enhancements. So now let's go ahead and I'll just do a quick mic test as I'm talking into the microphone where you should be talking at it. This is a front address microphone here. So 
talking into the microphone. Now I want to test the uh, side axis rejection. So this is to the right of the microphone. As you can hear, it should be, uh, you lose a lot of detail in your voice. Let's go to, to the left here. This is 90 degrees left as I'm talking. Same distance as I was before. And then 180 degrees directly behind the microphone, you should be hearing a lot less detail, almost a very muffled sound, if anything. And then back to normal. All right, so also real quick while I'm here, my AC is running, I'm going to, I'm going to quit talking, let noise floor settle out, and I'm going to turn on the noise suppressor so you can hear how good it works. So there you go, adaptive noise suppression. You got to love it. All right, so this last thing I want to show you is a nice feature that they've added in the Beacon app. I don't think anybody has done this before. They've added a 10-second record function that you can record your microphone voice, and then you can go and do the playback through your mic chain, and you can adjust everything without having to talk. You can just sit there and focus and listen. So let's do a 10-second recording real quick, and I'll press the record button. Hello, everybody. I am testing the Beacon mic, and I am doing some adjustments on this microphone to make it sound better. Awesome. Okay, so we've got the recording now, so I will now play it back, and you will hear the playback. And I, what I will do is I'm going, I'm, I have this profile on device four set that has no settings. And then I'll switch to on device, which is my normal uh, setup. Okay. Hello, everybody. I am testing the Beacon mic and I am doing some adjustments on this microphone to make it sound better. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I am testing the Beacon mic, and I am doing some adjustments on this microphone to make it sound better. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I am testing the Beacon mic, and I am doing some adjustments on this microphone to make it... So that is actually a really cool little function I like a lot inside of the Beacon app. Now, some helpful pointers for this when you're tuning your mic... You want to try to do it through a set of speakers. Uh, unfortunately, when you're using headphones and you're listening to headphones to tune a mic, you're also getting your head volume, head, head audio, stuff that you can hear, you know, naturally through your head. And that will unfortunately throw off the tuning of your microphone a little bit. So I definitely recommend if you have a pair of studio monitors or spare pair of speakers that are flat, you know, sounding, don't have a lot of bass, don't have a lot of treble, um, you can tune your microphone that way that takes out of the that takes your head space volume away and it gives you a more accurate representation of what the microphone sounds like well my first impression is really uh i think the microphone sounds fantastic uh even raw it sounds really good and the purpose of this microphone that beacon made is they were trying to give you a professional level kind of in use microphone that you won't have to go buy again uh, this microphone is supposed to sound as good as any of the high-end xlr broadcast microphones out there including the sn7b and so that's the purpose of this microphone it is a really nice quality high-end broadcast microphone it gives you a lot of functionality i love the beacon app i think the beacon app is uh, really well designed easy to understand even all all audio levels you should be able to get in there and within five minutes you should start to understand what you need going on and they're going to provide some nice uh guides too that are going to be there to show you what you need to do to set your microphone up and to set up a good mix now, with any software out there, you know, you're going to have issues and, uh, you know, over time, hopefully, you know, they'll get fixed really quickly. Uh, but so far, I really ran in, only ran into a few minor problems. But overall, yeah, I'm pretty impressed so far with what the software offers. Um, it pretty much gives you everything you need right out of the box. So with that being said, four view videos on each of these different pieces of gear independently. 
uh, will be coming soon. I will get the uh, updated software version out there that is the retail release. And then I will start testing and doing reviews on that. And if you have any questions on anything, anything specific you want me to cover in tutorials, comment down below and I would love to do that for you. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was pretty long and I appreciate you all that have stuck around this long for that. Uh, if you have stuck around this long, type in hi in chat. Would love to see it. All right, guys. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a great day and we'll see you later. Oh, also, thank you, Beacon, for sending me this gear for testing and review. It has been a lot of fun so far. I'm enjoying it. I can't wait to uh, even use it more and uh, help you guys out there make a conscious decision about what you're going to buy. All right, guys. Have a great day. We'll see you later.